Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 61 says, the function f is defined for all real numbers x by, and then they give you this generic quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, so these are just the coefficients and then the constant c, and a is negative. Okay, so right away, the fact that the leading coefficient here, the number in front of x squared, the fact that this is negative, okay, this actually has some significance, okay? We don't, I haven't even finished reading the problem yet, but I want to point out, because it will probably come up, um, that when the a value is negative, the graph of this quadratic function, which is called a parabola, it's going to open down, okay? So a uh, parabola opens down. All right, so anyway, so it says a is negative. In the xy plane, which is the normal plane that we graph on, the x-coordinate of the vertex. So uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. The x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola is negative 1. Uh, if t is a number for which f of t is greater than f of 0, which of the following must be true? And then there's some inequalities here. And really, these are going to have to do with um, the, uh, the, the value of the function at these x values. So, um, so let's, uh, let's try to visualize what's going on here. Okay, so we've got a quadratic, and you should know that the graph of a quadratic function, which is when you have x squared, uh, forms a parabola, which is kind of a U-shape looking graph. Okay, uh, if the A value is positive, the parabola is going to go up kind of like this. And then if it's negative, like the one that, you know, if A is negative here, then the parabola is going to open down, meaning my parabola is going to do something like this. Kind of like a little sad face here, a little sad mouth. So we get the happy mouth <laughs> when A is positive and the sad mouth when uh, A is negative. So anyway, it says the vertex of the parabola is, uh, or the x-coordinate of the vertex, rather, is negative 1. So what do, we, what do we mean by that? The vertex is going to be this point that's either the highest point, if we're talking about a parabola that opens downward. Um, trying to draw a little circle here so you can kind of see the point I'm talking about. So this little maximum value up here. Uh, or if it's opening up, it's the minimum value. So really the vertex is that point where the sign of the slope changes, either from being negative to positive or from positive to negative. Uh, so we know it's negative 1, the x value. So just to kind of give us a little something to work with here, uh, here's negative 1. Here's my x value of negative 1. We don't know anything else about the parabola. So all we know is that we have this sort of generic parabola. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of copy this and... Uh, paste it so I have something to play with over here. Um, we don't know exactly where it is, but what we do know is that the x value is fixed at negative 1. So it, could, it might be here, um, it might be up here, it might be down here. Uh, we don't really know, but what we do know is that the x value must be negative 1. So I'm just going to put it like right here for now, and then we might need to adjust it if, if uh, you know, depending on what these items are. So the first item that we're trying to determine whether or not it's true or false is that um, negative 2 is less than t is less than 0. So first, before we go any further here, it says t represents a number for which f of t is greater than f of 0. So let's, let's try to interpret what that's saying. It's saying that the y value, or the value of the function, at t is greater than the y value at 0. So let's label the x value 0 here. Here's 0. Okay, so here's negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. It's saying that f of t has a value that is greater than f of 0. So in other words, the height of the function, well, height maybe not the, the best word here. Let me, let me switch colors here. The value of the function when x is 0 is going to be this value right here. Okay. 
Um, again, this could be shifted up or down, but it doesn't really affect anything. We're not going to put a number on it. We're just going to say that this y-intercept uh, represents f of 0. So let me, let me kind of point that out here. This point right here. This is the location of f of 0. Okay. So it's saying f of t has got to be greater than f of 0. So f of t has to have a larger value than f of 0. So the y value has to be bigger, and the y values are always bigger going up. Okay, the smaller, the lower down you go on a curve, uh, on, a, on, on this graph, uh, the smaller the y values have. So uh, if, the, if the y values are going to be bigger than here, then really we're talking about a specific part of this parabola, which is going to be all of these values that are going to be higher up, I guess we could stop about here, than this f of zero point. So you know what I'll do is I'll draw a little line here, a little dotted line so that we can see, well, let's make it blue here. This is exactly what I'm talking about here. All right. So this line right here, uh, we, what we're looking for are all the, you know, if f of t is greater than f of zero, that means t has to be in between the two points where this line that I've drawn has intersected with the parabola. So that means t is somewhere in between here. Okay, t is going to be somewhere in this little interval. So t is anywhere from here to here. Can't be actually on the endpoints because then the values would be equal to f of zero. Uh, so it's somewhere in between. We don't exactly know where this is. At least we haven't figured that out yet. We'll need to know that to answer these questions. Um, but because the vertex is this point where the parabola is symmetrical, we know that since this distance is 1 from negative 1 to 0, uh, this distance also has to be 1. So we can say that the left-hand um, partition for this interval for what t could be is going to be at negative 2. All right, so now let's start examining these items. The first one says that t is in between negative 2 and 0. And we can see from this diagram that, yeah, that has to be true. Okay, so, yeah, so, uh, one, item number 1 here is going to be true. Item number 2 says that f of t is less than f of negative 2. So f of negative 2 is right here, right? This is the value of the function. Maybe I'll point this out here. This point right here. is where f of negative 2 is. Okay, f of t has got to be less than negative 2. We can see that's definitely not true. Since f of t is greater than f of 0, and f of 0 has to be equal to f of 2, then f of t has to be bigger than f of negative 2. So this is going to be false. We could correct this statement um, if we were to change the inequality symbol, saying that the value of the function is larger than what the value would be at x equals 2. So this would be like a, this should be greater than. And finally it says f of t is going to be greater than f of 1. f of 1, well, 1 is over here, and we can see that because this parabola is opening downward, f of 1 is going to be like somewhere down here, and the value of the function is going to be lower than any of these other values. So f of 1 has to have a value that is smaller than f of t, because all of these f of t's in here, potential f of t's, are going to be bigger than this number down here. They're higher up. So f of t is greater than f of 1? Yes, that has to be true. And so since we've identified that 1 is true and 3 must be true as well, then we're going to say that the answer here is, uh, the, only, the only correct answer here is going to be C. 
uh, which is that one and three are only choices here. Looks like I left it as, <laughs> as a dotted line here. Let's, let's make that a solid line because we want to say with some confidence what our answer is here. All right, there we go. So yeah, for number 61 is C. All right, so that's it for number 61. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.